Mississauga Lakeshore is one of the ridings in the 905 belt which surrounds Toronto, and this is a huge political battleground in this election, mainly because it's so rich in seats. Now, this riding used to be called Mississauga South, and it has a long tradition of long-standing incumbents. In the Mulroney era, Don Blencairn held this seat for the Conservatives. And then Paul Zabo won it for the Liberals, and he was the MP for 17 years. In 2011, in the last election, Stella Ambler won this riding for the Conservatives. She is running again and doing everything to try to be re-elected. The Liberals, though, have poured everything into this riding, and they've chosen a star candidate. And the NDP, riding high in the polls under Tom Mulcair, well, they may also make this riding an even more interesting contest. I think every candidate is just trying to do their best job to get their messages out, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to talk to as many voters as possible um, and bring out my message, which is very positive. Here's what I've done for the community. Here's what I'll continue to do. I work very hard. Um, I'm, I live in the community, and, uh, and I, su I support many local initiatives. Um, and I think that's the message, right? So, uh, you know, the campaign is long, and uh, so if I worried about the numbers and when they go up and down, uh, I think that would just make it too stressful. This election is about people being tired of the Harper administration and tired of understating it. Um, it's failed economically. More importantly, it's failed socially. Uh, we're seeing people here day after day at the door. We're hearing them on the phone. People are coming into the campaign office and are telling us uh, that they will no longer support this government. The, the really interesting and important fundamental uh, um, symptom of that is former conservatives who have supported Brian Mulroney, Joe Clark, um, coming to us saying we no longer recognize ourselves in that party and we no longer recognize our country. And they told us we can never win in Quebec. We won in Quebec. They told us we couldn't win in Alberta. We've won in Alberta. Now, here in this riding, the polling has shown that we are competitive with the two other parties. I've knocked on almost 15,000 doors. We are very competitive at the doors as well. And people, I think, are realizing it. And we will be able to create that change that people are expecting this time around. The riding of Mississauga Lakeshore is about a 20-minute drive southwest of downtown Toronto. It takes in the beautiful southern part of Mississauga along Lake Ontario. The riding includes communities like Port Credit, Lakeview, Applewood, Lorne Park, and Clarkson. The average family income here is around $130,000, and that puts it in the top third of Canadian ridings. But, as always, that includes a large spectrum of different incomes in different parts of the riding. Hi, I'm Stella. <laughs> Hi, Stella. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Alex, I'm Stella. What party are you with? Conservative. Thank God. <laughs> I like that reaction. Yes. And who's this? Jane. Jane. Hi, Jane. I'm Hi. Stella. Nice, nice to meet you. you. I'll be voting conservative. <laughs> good. Is Alex, you know, uh, affecting your? Uh, no, no, you know, no, he's no. good. You're, yeah. you're all good. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. Is he <laughs> trying to convince you? Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you help out on my campaign? It sounds like you're, you've got lots of enthusiasm. Oh, no, no, no. 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 no, 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 no. You're busy? Are you busy? I'm buying bread. Okay. Stella Ambler is a longtime conservative. Before she was elected in 2011, she ran Jim Flaherty's regional office when he was the minister responsible for the greater Toronto area. Before that, she worked with Mike Harris's Ontario Tories. She also co-owns a real estate business with her husband, Richard. She won the last election by a margin of about 4,500 votes, or 9% of the ballots. What do you think are the issues in the riding in this election? I think the issues are, um, well, mainly um, I'm hearing that people care uh, about strong leadership on issues like the economy and security. Security here at home, security abroad. Uh, those are kind of the two main themes. Uh, so I would say that, that people I talk to appreciate that, uh, that their taxes are lower and they want us to keep their taxes low. So um, they want us to make their quality of life better. They feel that's the role of government and that's what I feel the role of government is. So we're going to continue doing that. And I think that overall, uh, that's kind of the number one issue that I'm hearing. Over the last few months, there's been polls and some of the polls ask the question, are you in favor of change? And in a lot of these polls, they're getting up to two thirds, even more Canadians saying, we want change. Yep. Well, how if you're in the incumbent government and you've been sitting for so one I'm term, hearing, how, how do you deal with change or desire for change when you're the government in place? I, I'm hearing that too, but then in the same breath, the person at the door is telling me, 
Oh, maybe it's time for change because the Prime Minister has been in that position for nine years and you've been government for nine years. Uh, but the alternatives are uh, not attractive. And so they're also in the same breath saying, you know, but I really can't vote for the Liberal and I would never vote NDP. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that, that Canadians don't want change for the sake of change, that they look at who really is going to be the strongest leader, the one who will look after the economy and the government um, with the strongest team. And I think I'm part of that strong team. Hi, guys. How are you doing? You're doing this on the hottest day of the summer. My goodness. To try to win this riding back, the Liberals have chosen star candidate Sven Spengemann. Spengemann was born in Berlin, Germany, and moved to Canada at age 14. He spent the past few years living in Mississauga. With a degree from Harvard Law, his experience includes the private sector, working in the Privy Council in Ottawa, and seven years working as a special UN advisor to the government in Iraq. And that was a position he occupied until just 2012. So when you walk around the riding here, what are you hearing as the biggest concerns or the biggest issues in the riding? I mean, economics is front and center. Uh, we, can, we can frame it as economic opportunity, and it goes all the way from young people who are graduating out of university, college, uh, excessive amounts of student debt, not being able to find the traction that they could a decade or two ago. And it goes all the way over to, uh, through the working class families, through the established professionals, um, all the way over to our seniors. We're having trouble making ends meet without uh, CPP enhancement, without adequate health care, and increasingly also without adequate spaces um, for, for assisted care in the riding. So we have concerns about people just making ends meet. We have concerns about underemployment, more so, I would say, than unemployment. And there's a general feeling that people are working hard. It's an extremely educated riding. Um, people are very aware of the issues um, and have education, but they're not gaining the economic traction that they feel they should. One of the questions that comes up, and it's coming up as people watch their television for the last four or five months, and that is people are going to ask you about that refrain, Justin Trudeau, he's just not ready. Do you hear that on the doorstep? When you hear that on the doorstep or around you, how do you respond? We don't hear it as much as we thought we would. It comes up once in a while, it's a silly ad, and uh, the answer is that Justin Trudeau is absolutely ready. Justin Trudeau is a leader. And what I like to tell people is that uh, when you look back in history, uh, people like John F. Kennedy, Bill Clinton, even Brian Mulroney and Stephen Harper, when they took control of the leadership of their, of their parties, around about in their mid-40s, right? So somebody who's of age 40 has judgment. It takes good judgment uh, to be a leader, and Justin Trudeau is a leader. The reason I joined this team is because he has fire in his belly. Most importantly, it comes from the heart, and he's committed to the country. He's always told us it's never politics for the sake of the Liberal Party. It's politics for the sake of Canada. I guess the question is, though, uh, when you joined the team, Justin Trudeau was head and shoulders, uh, and the Liberal Party were head and shoulders ahead of all the other parties in terms of public opinion polling. Right now, it's a, it's, it's a three-way race. It's a dead heat. Uh, have those ads had an effect? I don't believe they have. I don't believe they have. They may have for a while, um, but people, Canadians are smarter than that. Happy Labor Day. I'm the candidate for the NDP in the next election. Yay. High five. <laughs> there you go. Can we count on your support this time around? Definitely. There you go. And maybe you can convince this guy here. There you go. Hi, I'm Eric Grabilski. Nice to meet you. Hopefully we can count on your support this time around. Take care. Happy Labor Day, guys. Happy Labor Day. Hopefully you guys are going to CNE and enjoying the beautiful day. Okay. Yeah, we're going to Hamilton. <laughs> You're going to Hamilton first? So Steel Town? And then, and then going in the CNE. Yeah, hopefully. The okay, NDP yeah. is pinning its hopes on Eric Gorbilski. He's a first-time candidate a who's a manager bank, at one of the big five banks. He's also a member of the Port Credit Business Improvement Association, and he's worked with a local food bank. In the last election, the NDP finished a distant third here with just over 12% of the vote. Eric Gorbilski, let's talk about, first of all, what you think are the biggest issues, what you're hearing on the doorstep in this riding. Well, I'm hearing a lot about uh, what has gone on in the last 30 years with liberals and conservative governments and how people are ready for change. Um, I'm hearing a lot of concern about affordability, so middle class affordability and the working class affordability. One of the main issues in this riding, though, is our economy and the small businesses. So us offering a tax cut of 2%, my background in defending small businesses of this area and continuing along this path 
I think goes a long way for this community because this, this is what makes this community thrive. Because you work in the financial sector. I do. Do you get any raised eyebrows? I mean, I know this is a stereotype, but do you get raised eyebrows when you say, hi, I work in the downtown Toronto financial sector uh, and I'm running for the NDP? Yeah, and, and that's a really good question because I think there's some, still a mentality within some pockets of this country that the NDP is a complete left-wing party, and that's not true anymore. With Jack Layden, we brought in the tent, and this is when I got involved with the NDP, was with Jack Layden. We brought in the tent where we have people that are progressives that care about our economy, and those two things are not false choices. They can exist together. What about, I mean, you know the big challenge here is in the last election, you got about 12.6% of the vote. So yeah. this is a polarized riding. This is traditional Tory, liberal, liberal Tory. Yeah. How do you break in? How do you, what's the right. secret? So this area is very much like in Rottensville in Toronto or um, Danforth in Toronto as well. There are NDP supporters here that typically don't vote NDP because of that previous history of how the voting patterns work but because we won in Quebec and never no one thought we'd ever win in Quebec because we won in Alberta and never, no one ever thought we won, would win in Alberta I think we can win here oh. hello how are you today sorry to disturb my name is Sven I'm a liberal candidate in Mississauga Lakeshore and just wanted to drop by give you some background on our campaign our contact details are on the back of the card. Um, are you going to be voting this time around? I am. Any thoughts yet on what might work for you, what you're most interested in, um, most concerned about? It's going to have to be the economy. Okay. Um, and making sure that we can, or the, the successful government can actually get us out of the recession, even though you know we're not, we're not quite in it yet. Right, but, um, right. I think... I'll be looking for that, and I'm certainly not voting NDP, but I'm, I'm, I'm undecided between Liberals and Conservatives. Okay. So one thing that you'd be interested in is our infrastructure investment program, okay. largest in Canadian history, announced it three days ago. It's $125 billion over 10 years, okay. and the specific sectors are public infrastructure that includes transport, social infrastructure, including housing, education, seniors, residences, and then also green infrastructure. Okay. How much bigger is that program over the Conservatives program? I believe it's an additional 60, okay. 65. I could double check on that, but that's, that sounds about what it is. Okay. And uh, we feel that the timing is right in terms of, first of all, we need bold leadership to come out of the current economic slump. Uh, the interest environment is low enough for us to take that step, and it's not runaway spending. It's a carefully defined program, and it's going to help us be more competitive because it will bring foreign direct investment into Canada. If we don't have the infrastructure to support businesses that want to set up here, they will go elsewhere. Right? So you are so a new candidate? I'm a new candidate, yes, I am. Um, yeah. Never been elected to public office no. before? Uh, how do you think you are going to um, do against the incumbent? We're going to do very well. The, the appetite for change is significant. We witnessed this in three ways at the door, just speaking to people like yourself on the phone and also people walking into our campaign office over in Applewood. We're getting people coming in saying, look, it's, uh, it's basically two, or two recessions in one administration. We've got to do more. It's time to take some steps to actually lead the economy. No government can control the economy fully, at least if it's market-based, but we need some leadership to do what we can to, to bring us out of the slump that we're in. Okay. All right, listen, I really appreciate the time. Let Thank us you. know if you have questions. Our number's on there, Pleasure. and don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Have Thank a good you. weekend. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Let's, um, let's talk about that fellow. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting conversation. And he referred yeah. to something that you're probably talking a lot about, and that is the whole economic policy. Yes. He... Yeah was even aware of Justin Trudeau's promise Correct. of infrastructure. He was asking questions mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. What about that infrastructure project that Justin Trudeau is promising? He's committing to $125 billion of mm -hmm. infrastructure spending, doubling the existing infrastructure spending, yep. but willing to go into deficit of $10 billion a right. year for the next few years to do right. it. Right. How many questions are you getting about that sort of policy? Yeah, we're, getting, we're getting concerns about deficits. I mean, as a general sort of question in the broader basket, but we're getting, we're getting quite a good reception on the leadership it takes to come out of this economic slump. And we feel that infrastructure spending is the answer for three reasons. First of all, we badly need it. It's well overdue. Our municipalities and provinces own much of the infrastructure, and we don't have conversations with them about, about how to upgrade it, how to fix it. That's the very minimal starting point. And then we need to back that with some spending, which we've done. Uh, it's also an interest rate environment that's favorable. With those interest rates, we can
can justify the expenditures that we're taking. And uh, thirdly, it's what's going to take us out of the economic slump that we're currently in. The Liberals have just promised a massive infrastructure spending program. They promised to double what your government's spending on infrastructure and to go into deficit to do it over the next three years. So Justin Trudeau and the Liberals are running on that. What's your response to that? Uh, well, I would say what most people are telling me, and I agree with them, is that uh, um, it's about time we, we have a balanced budget and, uh, and it's a good idea to have a balanced budget because looking after our finances is, is the role of government and people think that's important. Um, they don't want to go back into a deficit situation. They understand that that's not good for the average Canadian. And, uh, and so they also... Um, I think here in in this neighborhood, we uh, um, people understand and appreciate the fact that we've done uh, a lot for um, improving infrastructure. We've worked with the city and city uh, city officials and elected uh, officials, and we've been able to do a whole lot. I mean, even just. Uh, the uh, Dixie QEW interchange was a, a big announcement. That's going to help people get to work uh, faster. It's uh, it's going to help people uh, from all over South Mississauga uh, and take down commute times, uh, reduce commute times. That's very important, right? Because people want to spend more time at home and less time on the road. So we're you know we've invested historic dollar amounts in infrastructure uh, and in in the GTA especially. So we have to ask about the big thrust of economic policy in this election. Um, the Liberals are proposing deficit spending, stimulus spending, uh, up to $10 billion of deficit yeah. a year yeah. to invest in infrastructure. The Tories are, of course, criticizing that and saying that they've finally come to balance budgets. But the Liberals are also pointing at you and saying that Tom Mulcair yeah. has gone over to the dark side because he's going to be into deficit reduction and not stimulating the economy. So how do you respond to that? Well, I mean, best, past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. So based on that, the NDP has a record provincially of having the most balanced budgets out of any party since 1980. So just using that, that line of thought and how hard we've worked at balancing budgets across this country, we are the party of balanced budgets. So I, it doesn't surprise me that Tom Mulcair says he's going to balance par part, uh, balance the budget because that's the history of our party. Can he do it though? Because both the Conservatives and the Liberals have, have done some number crunching, and they claim that Thomas Mulcair, that the, your policy, NDP policy, doesn't add up. Uh, the, Lib the Conservatives say about eight billion dollars yeah. short. The yeah. Liberals say twenty-one billion dollars short. Yeah. Uh, with all the promises he's made, he's not going to have the revenues. Yeah. So to promise no deficits, he's going to actually have to cut. Well, they they have promises as well, and they've been running deficits. Um, since 1980. So, I mean, it, it's nice to be able to say that, but at the same time, where's the proof? So, we have the proof of our past behaviors of balancing the budget. They have promises as well, and they have, especially with the Conservative government over the last eight years, have run a deficit. Now it's time for change so that we can balance the budget and we can also look out for the less fortunate for the humanitarian aid that's needed internationally and caring about the environment as well. I have to ask, because the election started early, way early, yeah. uh, and it started just as the Duffy trial was going on. So a lot of people were watching the latest revelations in the Mike Duffy trial and, and talk about Nigel Wright and Ray Novak and people close to the Prime Minister. What are you hearing about the Duffy trial? Uh, not not a whole lot uh, during the trial. A few people mentioned it at the doors. Not as many as I would have expected. Um, I think they, you know, this has been going on a long time. I think they understand that the that the Senate and some senators took advantage of their uh, position and for their own personal gain. And I, very few people uh, see that as a. Uh, uh, an issue now lots of people think that uh, you know that we should do something about the Senate and we agree I certainly do um, and so uh, we've put forward reforms and the Prime Minister has said you know I'm not gonna appoint any more senators uh, so I, I think uh, uh, Canadians are okay with that they they understand that uh, we really need to to get that um, 
under control before we continue appointing senators. And, um, you know, certainly the Supreme Court decision didn't help us in any regard that way. We were trying to reform it, and uh, we were essentially told that, uh, that we couldn't. Uh, so that was very disappointing. We saw in the polls, though, that the popularity of the prime minister and maybe the conservative brand took a bit of a hit again because the trial was back on. And it, and it raises all these questions about how many people in his office knew about what. Uh, still unanswered questions, but there's all sorts of contradictory evidence, but it, it all points to his office. And I'm just wondering if you're concerned about the whole brand being hurt and among conservatives, too. Yeah, um, well, I think that uh, the, the people who were responsible uh, were held to account and the others were just, um, I, I mean, what people knew or didn't know is, is all very complicated and it's such a long trial. Uh, I don't think most people understand that, um, or sorry, I think most people understand that um, it's a very kind of inner circle issue. Uh, it doesn't involve um, uh, uh, any kind of widespread uh, uh, problem other than, other than the Senate itself, which, you know, which has to be held to account, and, which, and that's what we're trying to do, really, is hold the Senate to account. Another candidate in this election is Dagmar Sullivan. She's run before in this riding as well as the neighboring one. Her party, the Marxist-Leninist Party of Canada. Well, the central issue in this election is the necessity for change. The people are striving for empowerment. They want to have control over the decision-making process, the decisions that affect their lives, and they're being blocked by the established parties. So how can... Uh, People participate in these elections in a way that uh, favors them. So the first thing that uh, can that needs to be done is to throw out the Harper Conservatives and to hold the other parties in check. So to vote Marxist-Leninist is makes a statement. It's a resounding no to the austerity agenda, to the attacks on the people, the indigenous peoples, uh, workers, farmers, veterans. Um, scientists, uh, youth and students, all sections of the people, and it says no to uh, U.S. and uh, Canada's involvement in U.S. wars, and it says no to Harper's brutal policy on refugees. The option that we see right now that's actually real is uh, to ensure that if it's going to uh, be a liberal or a conservative government, then everybody goes full forced to ensure that it's a minority government. If it, if it looks like it's going to swing to the NDP, everybody goes full force to ensure it's a majority government so that the people can hold them to account. It's people's empowerment that we're looking at. But in that context, it has to be taken to, into account that to vote Marxist-Leninist puts all of these established parties on notice that people are fed up that they will not allow things to carry on where they have no control over the decisions that affect their lives. That uh, what the people want is a government that is accountable to them. They want to ensure that the uh, wealth that the people in this country produce is actually used for nation building, not nation wrecking, and that we have friendly relations with nations. I have to ask you one thing. You mentioned that your goal in this election for people's empowerment and people's involvement is to make sure that you, if it's a liberal government or a conservative government, you just said there'll be minority governments, but if it's an NDP government, that it'd be a majority government. Can you explain that rationale? Well, the uh, NDP is making all kinds of promises. Uh, national daycare, they'll repeal Bill C-51. So the if they're in a minority position, then we have experience. You know, what what do these parties do when they're a minority position? They they say they can't do, they can't live up to any of their promises. Our point is to strengthen the people's uh, as a as an organized force. So if the people are capable of achieving any of these aims, like uh, if it looks like the Bush, it's the it's the ruling elite that's going to choose which party is going to come to power. So then can the people have any control over that? So if they decide it's going to be Harper or the Liberals, then we have to ensure, then people have to just go all out to make sure it's a minority government. If the, if, if the ruling circles choose it to be the NDP, then the people have a great opportunity. Put them in and then keep in action. 
force, you know, put that pressure on. You have to live up to your promises. So at the same time, we think that by uh, voting Marxist-Leninists, if you have that whole section that uh, the, that comes right out and, and takes this, makes this statement, then any of these parties, or really all of these parties, have to take into account that the people are getting fed up with them. Along the lakeshore in Port Credit, people can be excused for having a hard time paying attention to the election. On days like this one, it seems like most of Mississauga has come down to the Lake Ontario waterfront to take advantage of the last days of summer. But people are starting to form an opinion about this election and what it's all about. Issues, there's always tax in this riding, environmental concerns. You're up here by a wonderful lake. Can you eat the fish that comes out of it? No one's been talking about that. Are you leaning one way or another? Oh, gosh, yeah. You know who you would vote for? Harper has to go. His time. He's done his time. But that means what? Then who would, would that be NDP, Liberal, Green? Well, yeah, that's the thing, you know. Um, I like Justin Trudeau better than I do Mulcair. And I think I'm going to give my support to the Liberal Party. I would definitely say transparency in the government has been an issue lately. However, I don't know... I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, the, the economy is the biggest issue, but it's hard to say who's really going to be the best solution for that. So, I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not decided at all right now. So, yeah. So, If you had to use one word to describe what's the most important for you in this election, what would it be? Economy. But, yeah. The most important thing to me is actually getting rid of Harper. Point blank. Why? Um, the economy, uh, I believe he's incredibly corrupt, lack of transparency in government, um, the environment, he's like almost criminal in the way he's dealt with the environment, um, same with science, you know, and uh, I think he's just, he's nothing more than a representative for big corporations, big oil, does nothing for us. Selfishly, I'm, is one, what's important to me uh, are issues relating to families with children, that's me self selfishly. Uh, but more broadly, I'm, I'm uh, interested or concerned, rather, about the economy and how the housing prices are, are moving. The interest rates, how low they can stay, because that's just nonsensical to me. And uh, that's, what, that's what I'm thinking about. Are you leaning in one way or another in terms of who you might vote for? No, because I'm sort of pessimistic, pessimistic about all politicians, so it's like the best of the worst is how I look at it. Okay. All right, thank you. Can I, can I ask you, um, what you, I don't know, what you're paying attention to in the election, if, if, if anything at all? Uh, well, I noticed recently the, uh, the whole refugee uh, issue, because um, unfortunately I did see the picture of the little boy on the beach, which is forever ingrained. And, and you know, with this one here, um, this little guy, it's, it's, it's the first thing I thought of. Um, and it's just what I noticed, the, the way that the politicians just use that as fodder, and, you know, just to kind of talk about that and use that to their advantage. I thought that was pretty sickening, I think, as a, as a parent. Um, but that, not that it's a real issue for um, the, the, the long term. It's like the economy and everything like that is, is important. But it's just the way that they use that to spin it for themselves. I think most important for me, it's a family. And they have very good plans for family. And every person who is like a working class person... They have very good plans, so I like it then. The MB NDP? NDP, yeah. Okay. yeah. Can I ask you, if, if you had one word to describe what's the most important thing for you in this election, what is it? Uh, it's, uh, I guess, $15 per hour and ch child care plan and the, the other, whatever they have plans. Uh, I, I think this is time to, to change. In Port Credit, in the riding of Mississauga Lakeshore for CPAC, I'm Martin Stringer.